Lars, um, among e like EU ETS, as you mentioned, it's already being implemented, uh, and the and the overall discussions which are happening are around global carbon emission tax. How do you see um, this all impacting intermediaries like NVOCCs and freight forwarders? Do you see any kind of impact, direct impact over there? No. Uh, basically, when it comes to the NVOCCs and the freight forwarders, I was about to say they're, they're caught in the middle. They're caught in the middle between what is that the shipping lines actually offer versus what is the willingness to pay on behalf of their customers uh, further down the line. They can, of course, then try to devise products and tell their customers, if we move with this carrier, it's more advantageous than if we move with that carrier. They can definitely offer that, but they can't necessarily force the customers to then choose uh, what solutions they want to uh, go, go down. And when you talk about other stakeholders, there's yet another stakeholder, one we haven't really talked much about yet either. And that's again, the fuel producers. Mm. Because th this is, in my mind, the, the Achilles heel. We need much more investments to go in and build the facilities to create the green fuels. Mm. The green fuel that right now is the most implementable let's put it that way would be the green methanol to which degree for example ammonia or nuclear will be used i think that is a much longer time frame but i have not seen anybody come up with a realistic time frame of building enough industrial facilities to decarbonize the entire shipping industry take the number with a grain of salt because i haven't been able to get to the bottom of it but Ballpark, I think we need something like 800 million tons of green fuel if it's methanol per year. Right now we are producing, I think it's on the order of tens of thousands of tons per year. So this is an extremely daunting task. I see a lot of focus again on the shipping lines. What kind of vessels are they ordering? What are they doing? But I don't see near enough pressure over on the industrial side. Who is realistically going to produce this? And without the fuel, we can build as many green ships as we want. That's where the shipping lines are at least realistic as well. The ones they built that are genuinely green ship are dual fuel capable. So they can still run on fossil fuels because otherwise you're going to be stuck with a ship and no fuel. That makes perfect sense. So I think we need either more pressure or more economic incentives to build these industrial facilities much more rapidly than what we're seeing out in the market. 